This video is about the viable distribution and also about uh, viable parameter estimation, so fitting the viable distribution to data. The viable distribution is a parametric lifetime distribution. Parametric lifetime distributions are fully specified by their parameters. So here, for instance, the normal distribution is specified by its mean and its standard deviation. But if we talk about lifetimes, then the viable distribution is the most commonly used distribution. And that's because it's quite a flexible distribution and we can use it to model uh, different types of failure behaviors. Uh, then the parameters. So a viable distribution has two parameters, a scale parameter that we will uh, indicate by lambda. And there's also a shape parameter that we will denote by k. Then the next step is the density function. So the density function gives you the likelihood of failure at a certain time uh, t. And for the viable distribution, the density function uh, is uh, given by the following formula. So you see that the formula depends on the parameter values lambda and k. And if we then plug in a value for t, then you get the likelihood that the machine um, fails at that moment in time. So when reaching that specific uh, age that we plug in. Let's then also see how that viable density function looks like. So here we have the density function for different values of uh, the shape parameter k, where we fix the scale parameter at uh, 1. And you see that k is really the shape parameter, because if k gets a different value, then the shape of the viable density function is also quite different. So for k is 0.5, you see that it's very likely that we have very early failures. If k becomes larger, then the probability mass becomes more centered around uh, the value of lambda, the value 1. So you see that for k is 5, it's most likely that failure occurs uh, close to age 1. We can also see what happens if we change the scale parameter, that the shape of the density function is not going to uh, change. But if you double the value of the scale parameter, then the uh, viable distribution will basically be uh, stretched. So all times until failure will get twice as uh, long. Then the distribution function and the reliability function of the viable distribution. The distribution function is denoted by capital F. And that capital F gives you the probability of failure before time t, so before reaching age t. For the viable distribution, that's uh, defined like this. So this is the distribution function of the viable distribution. And then we also have the reliability function. And the reliability function is denoted by capital R. And that gives you the probability that we survive until a certain uh, HT. So the probability that failure does not occur until time T. And that's then 1 minus capital F. So capital R for the viable distribution, 1 minus capital F. And if we take 1 minus this, and the one cancels out and the second part becomes positive. So then this is the definition of the viable uh, reliability function. Again, dependent on the parameters, of course, of the viable distribution. This is how it looks like. And we have two typical shapes for the viable reliability function. If k is uh, significantly larger than 1, then we get a shape like this. And if k is uh, equal to 1 or smaller than 1, then the typical shape of the viable reliability function is more like this. If you then have a specific uh, viable distribution, it's also interesting to know what its mean and its uh, variance uh, are. So if a unit follows a viable lifetime distribution, then the mean of that viable distribution is just the mean time between failures. And that mean of a viable distribution is given by this. So it's lambda, and then multiplied by uh, the comma function because this is the comma function, and that comma function is evaluated uh, at the point 1 plus 1 over k. If we are going to use Excel, then we have the function comma available, so that can then be used to easily evaluate that comma function. And then we also have a mathematical expression for the variance of the viable distribution, so if you would like to calculate that, then this formula can be uh, used for that. Then we continue with viable parameter estimation. And then the question is basically that if we have a data set available, which viable distribution is the most likely to be the true viable distribution given that data that we have available? So we make the assumption that a machine has a viable lifetime distribution, and then we would like to determine the values of the parameters lambda and k that are most likely to be the true parameter values, again, given that data sets that we have available. This is the data set that we will use. So we have eight durations. Two of them are censored, so they end with preventive maintenance. The other six durations are event durations that end with uh, a failure. 
Let us then first uh, consider specific given values for lambda and k. And if we then have an event duration, so uh, a moment of time after which failure occurred, then the likelihood of such an event duration is given by the density function. And that depends then on the length of the duration, but also on the values of lambda and k. So that's for an event duration. Uh, if there are also sensor durations in the data sets, then the likelihood of getting a sensor duration with a certain length is given by the reliability function. Because the reliability function gives us the probability that we survive until a certain uh, ht. And the reliability function is given by 1 minus the distribution function capital F. In Excel, we can uh, use uh, the function viable.dist to uh, evaluate a small f, the density, and also capital F, the distribution uh, function. And then we should uh, make sure that x in Excel uh, refers to the length of duration. So when we use d in Excel, uh, x is used. And Excel uses alpha and beta for the parameters. So instead of k, we use alpha. And instead of lambda, we use beta in Excel. And then we also have a fourth parameter, cumulative, and that sets to it should be set to false if we would like to uh, evaluate the density function, and we should set it to true if we would like to evaluate the distribution function. So this is how we are going to determine the likelihood of each separate uh, duration in Excel. Let's also see a little bit more uh, what we are now uh, doing. So we have, for instance, a uh, time until failure of 4.8 hours. And here we just compare two different uh, viable densities. We have the one with uh, lambda is 2 and k is 4. The duration, the length of the duration is over here. And you see that it's quite likely that this is the real viable distribution because uh, here uh, the outcome of that Bible density is uh, quite substantial at the point 4.8. It's quite unlikely that this is the um, real viable distribution given this first observation. Here we only uh, compare two viable distributions. We have, of course, infinitely many, but this is just as an uh, illustration. The second uh, time until failure is 2.5 hours. And then you see that the first uh, viable distribution is slightly more likely than that uh, second viable distribution. So for the different durations, different viable distributions are more likely. But now the question is, which viable distribution is most likely given the entire data sets? Because all the data comes from a single uh, viable distribution. And that's the viable distribution that models the lifetime of the machine that we are uh, studying. What we can do now is we can determine for each uh, duration uh, the likelihood of having such a duration as a function of the parameters lambda and k of the viable distribution. And then this is what we get. So we can have here the lengths uh, or the list of the durations and also whether they are censored or not. And then the likelihoods, if we have an event duration, so if it's not censored, then the likelihood is given by the density function. If a duration is censored, so if it ends with preventive maintenance, then the likelihood of such uh, a duration is given by the reliability function, and that's 1 minus the distribution function. And then we have for each duration the likelihood here. If we then multiply all those likelihoods, then we have the likelihood of the complete data sets as a function of the parameters values lambda and k. And we can then try to maximize the likelihoods by finding uh, the best values of lambda and k. This can now be implemented in Excel. What I will do is I will first determine the uh, outcome of the density function for each of the durations, then uh, the outcome of the reliability function, and then here the likelihoods, there we take the right one of the two, depending on the type of the duration. If we would like to evaluate the viable uh, density function, then we can use the function viable.dist. And then the first argument is x, that's the length of the duration. Then alpha corresponds to the value for k. So here we have specified just an arbitrary value for k. Uh, beta corresponds to lambda. And then uh, for the density function, uh, we use false here because it's not commutative. And then it's also important that we fix the reference to cell B2 by pressing F4. And we also fix the reference to cell B1 because those uh, references should not be changed if we copy this formula uh, downwards. So here we have all the values for the density function. Then for the reliability function, uh, and that's 1 minus the distribution function. 
So one minus, and then we can use viable.dist to evaluate the distribution function. First argument is again the length of the duration. Alpha is again k, that should be fixed. Beta is uh, lambda, that should also be fixed. And now uh, this should be true, because here we talk about a cumulative distribution. And then we get this as the likelihood. And this can then also be copied to the other cells. And then in column E, we are going to take uh, one of the two values in columns C and D. So we use an if function to check whether the value in column B is equal to no. If it is equal to no, then we don't have a sensor duration. So then we have an event duration and then we use the density function. If it is uh, not equal to no, so if it is censored, then we use the reliability function. And if we do this, and if we copy this downwards, then we have for each uh, duration, the likelihood of that duration, given the parameter values of the viable distribution that we have specified over here. We already realized that the product of all these likelihoods uh, gives us the likelihood of the complete data set that will be denoted by capital L as a function of the parameter values lambda and k. So for uh, our uh, data sets, we have this as the likelihood of the data sets, and we would now like to uh, maximize this. And then the values for lambda and k that maximize this expression, that gives us the maximum likelihood estimations uh, for lambda and k. And we then basically have the viral distribution that is most likely to be the true viral distribution given the data sets. But there's one more uh, problem, and that is that if we take this uh, product over here, is that we then multiply many numbers that are generally smaller than one. Um, and if we multiply all those numbers, then we get a number that is extremely small, especially if the data set is very large, and that then leads to computational uh, problems. But there is a solution for that uh, computational problem, and that is we, uh, that we can take the logarithm of the likelihood uh, function. So instead of uh, the function that we already had, we take the logarithm of that function. And then uh, we use that the uh, logarithm is a monotonically increasing function. And that means that the values of lambda and k that maximize the original uh, likelihood function are the same values as the values for lambda and k that maximize this logarithm of the likelihood uh, function. Then how is that useful? We now have the logarithm of likelihood. So we have a logarithm of a product and the logarithm of a product is the same as the sum of the logarithms. So the logarithm of a number times another number and so on is the same as the logarithm of first number plus the logarithm of second number and so on. So we can then write the logarithm of the likelihoods as the logarithm of the likelihood of the first duration plus the logarithm of the likelihood of the second duration and so on. So this is now a summation and if we are going to maximize that then we don't uh, run into numerical uh, problems. And this can then be maximized by using uh, Excel. So we are now going back to Excel to maximize uh, the logarithm of the likelihood. So we are going to maximize this function by, change, uh, by changing lambda and k. So we will basically like to choose values for lambda and k such that this function is uh, maximized. We can do that uh, by using the Excel uh, solver. A note is then that uh, the objective of this uh, maximization problem is uh, nonlinear, so we are going to use the uh, solving method uh, GRG nonlinear in the Excel solver. And another note is that the starting values of lambda and k uh, are also important. If you start with values that are far away from the optimal values, then it can be that the solver won't find the uh, optimal solution. You can also see a graph of the Kaplan-Meier reliability function and also of the Weibull reliability function. This is still for uh, lambda is equal to 1 and k also equal to uh, 1. If we, for instance, change the lambda value to 5, then you see that the graph is going to change. So this is already a somewhat better fit, but still not the best uh, fit. And now we would like to know what the best uh, fit is. So which uh, viable distribution is most likely to be the correct uh, viable distribution. And that can be determined by using the solver. So we are going to data and then to uh, solver. What we would like to maximize is the sum of the logarithms of the likelihood. So we are going to maximize the value in cell F2. Then there are two cells that we can change, it's B1 and B2, so the values of the two parameters can be changed. Um, the two parameter values should be non-negative, so this box should be uh, checked, 
and we are going to use uh, this uh, solving method as already said before and then we just hit the solve button and then see what happens then we get the confirmation that solve for found a solution and what we then see over here is that this uh, fit is quite uh, good and also what we see over here are the maximum likelihood estimates for the two parameter values of the viable distribution. So given the data set that we started with, it's most uh, likely that the viable distribution with lepta is equal to 6.73 and k is equal to 2.44. It's most likely that that, that, that is the true uh, viable distribution in this case. Here we then also have the uh, information on slides. So again, given the data that we have, the maximum likelihood estimations for the parameters lepta and k are as follows. If you like, you can then also give the corresponding uh, distribution function, viable distribution function, just in the definition, replace lambda and k by their uh, values, and the reliability function is 1 minus that uh, function. So based on this, you can also calculate the probability that uh, a unit will not break down before reaching a certain age. And then also the mean time between failures, based on this estimated viable distribution, formula was lambda multiplied by the comma function evaluated in 1 plus 1 over k. If you calculate that uh, in this uh, specific setting, then you will get 5.97 hours. So that is in this case the estimation for the mean time between failures based on the fitted viable distribution. And you see that this is quite close to the uh, MTBF based on the Kaplan-Meier estimation. And that's also an indication that this is a good uh, fit for the data, this viable distribution. And here you also see the same uh, graph again on the slides.